And finally, uh, both Facebook ads and Google AdWords, which is sort of a little bit stepping out of the uh, realm of social media, but it's still within the dig digital marketing realm, both of them offer conversion tracking of one way or another. Now on Facebook, what that means is that uh, if, you, if you run a Facebook ad or a Facebook sponsored story for, uh, that takes people to your uh, Facebook page, they can't, they can't track conversions, at, at this point they can't track conversions for uh, if people are taken to your website. But if people are taken to your Facebook page, they can track conversions uh, based on the number of times people liked your page, uh, RSVP to your event, or installed the application that you are promoting uh, within 28 days of clicking on the ad. So uh, th they will track who clicked on it, and then if that user within uh, basically four weeks uh, w clicks, you know, likes your page or does something like that, Facebook will track those conversions. Uh, Google's uh, conversion tracking is even more sophisticated. Uh, they actually will uh, allow you to to track the interactions that people take uh, on your website once they once they move from a Google ad uh, over to your website. Uh, you know, if, if they fill out a form or if they click a particular button, you're able to track that using Google AdWords uh, to see what the conversions are there. So again, really good ways to to uh, track the return on investment by focusing on your conversions for your ads. And now some ideas about boosting your sales through social media. Uh, I think I've got uh, eight of these, uh, so I'll go ahead and, and talk you through them. The first one is, uh, is to introduce an e-commerce element directly onto your Facebook page. Uh, Facebook, since its inception, has allowed third-party developers to uh, to build special, uh, you know, build things that work within Facebook. And one of the things that you can do is uh, use FBML, which is Facebook's version of HTML, um, to build full, fully functioning e-commerce sites uh, within your company's Facebook page. Uh, Pivot is just now starting to get into uh, some of this FBML um, with some of our clients, uh, and something certainly we're excited about starting to do and, and looking into and, and uh, enjoying learning about it. Um, but the, the uh, company that sort of uh, started this, this trend, uh, at least they were certainly one of the first, was Delta Airlines. And to this day, if you go to Delta's uh, Facebook page, you can see this uh, here where, where Delta actually gives you the option to uh, book a trip straight through Facebook. So you can, uh, you can go ahead and uh, you know, search for flights and uh, purchase your trip, use your uh, Delta Sky Miles if you want to. You can check in online, uh, online, but it all happens through Facebook. And this is a way that they are using uh, the reach of social media to actually allow people to go ahead and purchase their products directly through Facebook without having to go over to the Delta website. Uh, and you can see, uh, if, if right now uh, their Facebook page has 177,000 plus likers, uh, and so this is a powerful tool for them to be able to have to drive sales uh, through their Facebook page. The second idea uh, is that Twitter is for deals. Uh, Twitter, because of the nature of Twitter where uh, you're sort of sh sending out short and quick blasts uh, that are very, very easy to share by retweeting, uh, Twitter is really a, a great way to let people know about uh, deals that are happening, quick discounts you want to offer, uh, things like that. Again, the pioneer here uh, was Dell Computer, uh, and what Dell did was open up a uh, a Twitter account called Dell Outlet, and you can see it here. It's still going strong. I think it started a couple of years ago. Uh, and what they do is that is they offer, uh, you know, just various deals on refurbished products, uh, things that are uh, they just want to put on sale, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, they have, as you can see here, they have well over a million followers, uh, a million and a half followers uh, for people who are you know, really the sole purpose of this is to sell products and give people a deal. And so they've got a million and a half people following them to see if there might be a deal that, that they want to see. So uh, Twitter is really a great way, a great program to use uh, for this sort of quick deals that fits in with your business model. So that's another idea for driving sales with social media. 
Yelp is your best friend. That's my third idea. Uh, I've talked in previous webinars about the importance of uh, making sure that your business is reviewed on Yelp. And I'll just sort of reiterate that here to say that uh, more and more these days when people are looking for uh, products or services or uh, places to uh, eat or whatever it is, they are going to Yelp to see what other people, uh, especially their friends, but, but they really anyone else has said about that particular place. Uh, and that really is driving purchase decisions. So you want to make sure, um, particularly, uh, you know, met most of our clients, and it looks like most of the people on the call are uh, are people who who whose businesses uh, are local businesses. And so uh, it's just vital for you, uh, particularly locally based businesses, uh, to make sure that you have some good Yelp reviews, uh, so that people who are in your area and have heard about you. Uh, can find out, can look and see that you, uh, you know, that people really are saying good things about you. So just a reminder here that Yelp really does drive sales because it helps people make their purchasing decisions. Uh, fourth idea is offer a refer a friend program. Uh, this is sort of a natural tie-in with social media. Refer the idea of a refer a friend is not new, uh, of course, um, but it takes on sort of a, a new. Uh, ability and new powers through social media because uh, it is so easy for people using social media to share things with their friends. Um, and uh, interestingly, one of the companies that I get a lot of refer friend deals from is Groupon, itself a sort of a social media uh, company, or at least a company that relies a lot on social media. Uh, and so I got this offer saying, you know, you can earn $30 if you refer a friend uh, to Groupon who's never used it before. Uh, and that means that I have, can get $30 to spend on uh, my next Groupon deal. And so this is really a, you know, it's something that's so easy to do, and they're, they're making it easy by offering you down at the bottom here uh, you know, easy ways to post it to your friends via Facebook and Twitter. Social media just allows people to re refer things to their friends in a way that was uh, not, simply not possible uh, 10, 15 years ago. Um, uh, I mean, even through email, there was added extra work to it. But now people can share things over Facebook really easily. Uh, so, so consider offering a refer a friend program uh, for some of your services where people might get a discount on your service or your product if they uh, invite some of their friends along as well. Idea number five is uh, create a sense of excitement for new products. Now, this is something that hopefully you're doing naturally anyway through your marketing campaigns. But again, social media is a, a great way to, uh, to get things like, uh, you know, the first teasers about a new product out, uh, really generating some excitement so that people know that something big is coming. Uh, people will start to ask you about it on social media if you do this because they will, they will see your posts that say, you know, that there's, there's something big and exciting coming down the pipeline. Uh, and then you can announce uh, the new product uh, using social media. Uh, and then uh, have some clear call to actions for people about uh, you know what what they should do now that the product is available and how they can uh, how they can get it and if they can get it on your um, uh, if they can get it directly on your Facebook page for instance as I pointed out with Delta uh, all the better then if they if they have that e-commerce option right there um, and then you might consider doing some some contests around new products so when a new product product launches, uh, do a contest to, to uh, help people win it and, or, or do a contest to help uh, you know, the first 300 who fans who, who reply to you uh, get a discount on the new product, something like that. Um, so uh, really it's all about just sort of using social media as a way to, and a very inexpensive way as opposed to running a lot of, of ads about a new product, a really inexpensive way with people who are already following you uh, to let them know about new products. Idea number six, uh, deal sites. This will always be on my list. Um, and, uh, you know, just a reminder, you know, about, about places like Groupon, Living Social, those sorts of, of places uh, that, that, do offer you, that do allow you to offer deals to your customers. I saw a really interesting article this past week that Mark Fordyce here at Pivot uh, forwarded on to me. And he said, or then, not, he didn't say, he didn't write the article. Uh, the article said that, uh, that, one of the main benefits of Groupon and Living Social is not so much 
the economic benefit, but it's the advertising benefit. It's, it's a way to get uh, a whole lot of, of free advertising because not only is it going out to the enormous lists that these companies have, but it's also then uh, being shared by people who receive it with their friends and that sort of thing. So uh, it was interesting to hear the deal sites referred to as a huge form of, of advertising as well as, as revenue. But it can also be, you know, if you are needing a revenue boost uh, and and you uh, you know you're needing a revenue boost, uh, but you don't necessarily you know have a sorry I'm losing my train of thought. If you, you need a revenue boost, but you uh, and you don't mind giving people a big discount. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Uh, if you don't mind giving people a big discount, then deal sites can really be a way to inject that that revenue uh, quickly. Number seven, uh, offer to answer people's questions. Uh, hold a, I've talked a little bit about offering Q&A sessions. I've talked about that on previous webinars. But go ahead and, you know, if a new product is coming out or if your service is changing in some way uh, and there are likely to be questions, hold a public forum where for a full business day you are, you are there ready to answer anybody's questions that they might have about why this new product or service is useful, uh, or or what's going to happen if they purchase it, how they can use it, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, just show yourself ready to answer questions about the new product so that people can make that decision to purchase uh, better informed uh, and, and just feel like they really know what they're getting into before they go ahead and purchase. Uh, really being there to answer customers' questions and doing it at a time, you know, a specific sort of time and date uh, is going to be a good way to drive sales as well. And the final idea uh, is just to make your brand irresistible. Um, uh, you know, I, I really am convinced that, that just about any company can do this regardless of what it is that you do. Uh, you know, make your personality shine through so much. Uh, make it seem like your company is so much fun uh, that people just really want to be associated with you and want to sign on with the products that you have. Um, and my example for this uh, will always be Old Spice uh, that just does an amazing job, as you can see here with this sort of ridiculous profile picture they have uh, and these really fun status updates that they post. Uh, you know, th they really have just just made uh, made their brand irresistible, as I said before, and it really is uh, showing huge spikes for them in terms of sales. So that's what I have in terms of my ideas for driving sales with social media. Uh, I do see a uh, a couple of uh, announcements, or I'm sorry, announcements, a couple of questions here. Uh, one of them has the word announcement in it, which is why my mind screwed that up. Uh, anyway, uh, one question here related to new products, what do you think about the very first announcement of a new product or service being on Facebook? Uh, or should it be on Facebook at the same time as sort of traditional product announcements? I actually think that if you're willing to uh, to take that leap of faith uh, with social media, I think announcing a new product or service on Facebook first or on Twitter first is a great idea. And the reason it's a great idea is that your Facebook, uh, your Facebook likers and your Twitter followers are people who are already feeling a sense of connection to your brand. And so they're already your most loyal people. And so to reward them for that, uh, for liking you, uh, by telling, be, letting them be the very first ones to hear about your new product or service, uh, I think can really uh, result in some some good sales because people know when they are uh, when they're being treated specially, uh, and so uh, I think that really is something to consider uh, having the first announcement of a new product or service appearing in social media first and then rolling it out via more traditional means. Uh, there is a another question here: Is Groupon now available right now? Uh, will existing Groupon customers automatically get this service, or do you have to download something new? Um, Groupon now is available right now, and, and as I mentioned, for a limited time, they are uh, offering companies to uh, register Groupon now deals for free. Um, and uh, existing cu Groupon customers, it, it's not a service that you get over email. It is actually a new uh, app that is for smartphones. So in order to uh, for consumers to uh, start getting Groupon now deals, they do have to download that app. Uh, so uh, that's just something for for uh, you know, you might even educate your own consumers uh, about your own customers about uh, 
that so that they know that there is this new service and that it can help them get deals, but it is something they have to download. So that's it for, for me for today. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. As always, the webinar slides will be available on the Facebook page uh, in just a few minutes here, uh, and I'll get the video up uh, sometime over the weekend. Uh, you can also register for our next Straight Talk webinar on our Facebook page if you want to. The next webinar will be Friday, July 1st, and our focus is going to be personal social media assets and boundaries. Uh, if that title doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, what I mean by that is I'm going to look at the ways that uh, using your own personal Facebook page or Twitter account to drive business or to, uh, you know, the way that should and shouldn't be used and considerations that you should have in mind, uh, particularly for people in your company who, uh, you know, maybe your, your, well, I shouldn't say that, really from CEOs on down to your customer service representatives, really anybody within your company, uh, how they should and shouldn't be using um, uh, social media to promote the brand. Um, so I'll be talking about that next time. Uh, that's it for me from today. Thank you so much. Remember to keep your media social and your talk straight.